welcome back to part two of the Garden of Eels and Horses. It's been a good week since we added the live sand. You can see the water's cleared up quite well. We've also put the plastic decorations into the tank. There's the spray bar, which is the return from the filter compartment in the back. You can see it discharges its water up at the surface. That comes around to the front of the tank, down the face of the tank, and horizontally across the bottom, and then back up in the backside of the tank. The advantages are twofold. One, it keeps the plastic plants standing tall and two, it creates a laminar or a horizontal flow of water or a sheet of water that moves horizontally across the sand. This should be great for our garden eels that we're just about ready to add. So often people don't understand how to acclimate um, fish uh, to their tank. Um, and the reason for acclimating is to allow the new inhabitants to adjust or to acclimatize to the new environment. Um, whether it be fresh water or salt water, because there are uh, variations not only in temperature but in water quality, more specifically uh, pH, uh, water hardness, um, things such as that that may not seem all that important to you and I by jumping in a pool you can feel the big shock temperature change uh, from the air into the cold water. Uh, if it's a radical situation like that with fish that can be quite stressful and stress is what uh, is the biggest killer of fish. It, it, it's what will allow the fish to become uh, receptive uh, if that's the right word or the wrong word. Um, susceptible would probably be the better word too bacterias, fungal infections, parasites, of which all fish, just like all people, carry all of those things. It's just when we're not stressed, we're capable of dealing with them and they don't get a foothold or take an advantage of us. Uh, but unfortunately, once you become stressed, your system then becomes susceptible uh, to these other uh, issues. So, point being, this is the bag version of acclimation. So you've brought your fish home uh, or received them via the shipment and they've arrived uh, pumped full of oxygen with a clamp of some sorts or a rubber band uh, wrapped around the top which is containing some air inside there. You don't really know how long they've been in there and really was that oxygen or was it just air or did someone breathe into the bag to inflate it. So what we need to do is open up the bag, but we, also, we want to open it up in a manner that allows us to dip water from the tank into the bag. And at the same time, uh, some mechanism that allows, us, allows the bag to not float away, and you'll understand what I mean by that in just a second. So, as you can see, there are two bags in the tank. They're both inflated with a metal clamp on there. We can't take the metal clamp off, but we can cut the bag open. Um, which will let out the air, and because the air is gone, just like a life preserver without air in it, it no longer floats. So we need to have a pigtail of some sorts and some mechanism to attach or affix that to so it doesn't blow away. Uh, because you may not be able to see it, but there's a, a goodly current coming through the center of that tank there. So uh, we're going to make the cut high. And of course it helps if you have a sharp blade. So there we've opened up the bag, and we've got this tall pigtail. So what we're going to do is dip the bag into the aquarium, trying to get aquarium water in the bag, not the aquarium water in the tank. And then the pigtail part of it would be is we can take this and kind of set the light hood on top of it so that that still floats there. It doesn't float away. Because if it floats away, it's just going to sink, and nothing's going to come as a result of uh, that kind of acclimation. So again, hold the bag in a manner that allows us to dip aquarium water into the bag, not the bag water into the tank. And typically the reason you don't want to introduce the bag water into the tank is the fish, who knows how long he's been in that bag, has done his business in the bag. So no need to introduce that into the tank. And you don't really know how quality a system, although you hope it's high, uh, that your stuff came from. So why take a chance of introducing something into the tank? So these bags are going to float for about 30 minutes. 
Uh, we're going to every 10 minutes open up the bag and dip some of our tank water into the bag. That way over the course of 30 minutes, uh, approximately an additional 25% of our water has gone into the bag. Now with that in mind, if you have a system that, that as the water leaves the tank, uh, it needs to be replenished, be prepared to reintroduce some water back into the tank as a result of this type of acclimation. So let's go ahead and let those acclimate for a bit. And now after 30 minutes, we're going to lift the bags themselves out of the tank and place them in a five gallon bucket down below on the floor. This will allow us to remove the garden eel only, leaving the dirty water in the bag. Meet the spotted garden eel. This one is about six inches long and has already burrowed into the sand and is poking out, taking nips at food that's floating on by. Garden eels can get up to 16 inches long and truly requiring a deep sand bed. There are numerous species of garden eels, this one being the spotted version and this being the slightly shyer golden version just peeking over that ridge there. These eels will bury themselves in a deep sand bed tail first. They can then secrete a mucus from their body that cements the inside lining of the tube that they've just burrowed themselves into. And by tightening their muscles, they can extend themselves out beyond the floor of the opening and capture food particles as it's floating in the water. According to popular aquarium literature, as well as information I've found on the internet, all point that garden eels are the more difficult of all the eels. Well, I thought I would try them. We're gonna start with six. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep you posted as we go along. So come on back for part three.